videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. An actress? I like to say actress rather than actor. Helen Mirren is one of the entertainment industry's crown jewels. And no, I'm not just saying that because she once won an Oscar for her portrayal of Queen Elizabeth II. While living alongside her longtime husband, filmmaker Taylor Hackford, Helen has worked extensively on stage, film, and TV while being regarded as one of the industry's greatest talents. And for almost the whole time, she's primarily been based out of her longtime home located in the Hollywood Hills. Helen and Taylor first met in 1986. That very same year, Hackford would buy a 6.6 acre property in the heart of Los Angeles. That was originally built in 1911 for silent film star Dustin Farnham, the same man that Dustin Hoffman would one day be named after. From there, the property would go on to have a rare pedigree, boasting three further owners, all of whom were Hollywood luminaries. After Dustin came writer and producer Mark Hellinger, whose short story inspired the classic 1939 gangster picture, The Roaring Twenties, starring Humphrey Bogart and James Cagney. Next up came Gail Patrick, one of the first and most successful female TV producers of her time, who helped bring the hit series Perry Mason to life. Following Gail's passing, Helen's soon-to-be husband, Taylor Hackford, bought the property and shortly after, Helen moved in as well. While speaking about her history with the home, Helen would tell the Wall Street Journal in 2021, It was the first house that we lived together in. Although it's a big house, it doesn't feel like a big house. You don't feel like you're a little pea in a huge pod rattling around. I totally get what she's saying, to be honest. Perched on a hill near Runyon Canyon Park, Helen Mirren Helen's ultra-private 6.5-acre property is comprised of a two-story main residence as well as a three-bedroom guest cottage that shares its gorgeously landscaped surroundings with a pool, a five-car garage, and mature trees. On the inside, many of the home's old-world detailing has been maintained, like its terracotta-tiled floors in the kitchen and bathrooms, as well as the exposed brick fireplace that's used to warm the kitchen's dining area. All in all, there are five bedrooms spread throughout the main house, including a paneled library with a hidden wet bar and a generously proportioned formal living room that spills out through French doors to a city view terrace above the home's pool. How amazing does that sound? In fact, the home's charming floor plan is arranged in a way that views of the surrounding area and city skyline can be viewed from practically every room in the house. Elsewhere, you'll find the roomy and perfectly equipped eat-in kitchen that's only somewhat dated thanks to its less than contemporary finishes and fittings. Speaking of things that aren't exactly contemporary, a number of the home's bathrooms are also stuck in the 1980s, with some of them even featuring glass block shower enclosures. While two of those areas in the home might not blow away any visiting guests, if Helen really wanted to make a good impression, she could invite her company to stop by the cozy and snug looking music room that's been layered with rugs, a stylish sofa with pops of blue, and a gorgeous grand piano in the far corner that no doubt provides the perfect evening entertainment. Then again, I mean, if she was looking for something a little less formal, I'm pretty sure the lounge would do. Much like the music room, it's warm and inviting, but it has a slightly edgier style thanks to its use of velvet and gold textures. Last but not least, there's the estate's dining room, which is home to some of Helen's finest art. Banana leaf wallpaper, designer chairs, and a vintage style rug that's sure to make this social space a major hit. Now out back, you'll find strands of lights over top the terraced gardens that surround the nearby pool. The swimming area also boasts chic pink loungers as well as green and white striped umbrellas that are apparently a nod to the iconic pool at the Beverly Hills Hotel. After living in this home for close to 30 years, Helen and Taylor listed the property in 2021 for $18.5 million. When they didn't immediately find a buyer, they decided to rent it at a whopping rate of $45,000 a month. Two years later, the couple would relist the home once more, this time for $17 million. It's unclear if they found a buyer quite yet, but regardless, Helen and her hubby have already moved on to one of their other spectacular homes, which is exactly what we're going to do next as
as well. Over the years of their relationship, Helen and Taylor have bought a number of homes to share, their absolute favorite of which is a Lakeview mountain retreat on the Nevada side of Lake Tahoe. When asked in the past to discuss her favorite place to be outside of a film set, Helen has always been quick to point to this remote location as her home away from home. But she barely got the chance to spend any time there until the pandemic hit at the beginning of this decade. When asked to discuss what it was like for her and Taylor to shelter in place in Nevada, Helen told The Independent, It's given me the opportunity to be with my husband in sort of a normal everyday way, which has been fantastic. It is actually the first time in all of our 30 years together that we've sat down at the table each night and had dinner together. Normally, we're getting on planes, going here, there. So it's been fabulous just to be a normal person. As nice as it no doubt must have felt for Helen to be normal for a short period of time, that isn't to say that living life in the wild is always easy. And once she actually had to scare away a bear that was attempting to climb up her back when she's not intimidating the wildlife, Helen spends time in her garden or out by the water, which is right nearby. Of course, she keeps the interior of this home on the down low, but based on a few pics that she shared on social media, it's likely that her bedroom here boasts a wooden headboard with a bunch of framed personal photos decorating the surrounding walls. There's also what appears to be a neutral color scheme over in her living room with white walls and a gray blanket draped over her sofa, as well as a framed picture of a bird hanging on the wall. As nice as both of these properties are, sometimes the UK-born actress gets a little homesick, and when she does, she hops on a plane and heads back home to Europe, where she owns two more remarkable homes. As of 2023, Helen and her husband own two properties in Europe, a four-story townhouse near the River Thames in London, as well as a restored 16th century farmhouse near Tijano, Italy. Let's start by taking a look at the latter. Helen's vacation home here sits on a cliff with a sheer drop down to the water below. Situated in Italy's Apulia region, this historical farmhouse style estate is surrounded by olive trees, gardens, and its very own vineyard. Helen spent nearly $350,000 restoring the 500 year old property stone by stone using old techniques and natural materials turning it into the perfect spot to unwind and enjoy the stunning scenery about 12 years after buying this residence Helen found another piece of property in the area 10 miles away that she scooped up and set about rebuilding unfortunately that led to issues with her neighbors who complained that the renovation was not only illegal but was disfiguring the natural beauty of the area Helen had to abandon those plans as a result, but it's not like she doesn't have other places to stay while visiting Europe if they don't want her over in Italy. Like say her London home, a 19th century four-story Georgian townhouse situated directly on the Thames River. Much like with her Lake Tahoe retreat, not to mention her Italian getaway, Helen hasn't shared a whole lot of details about this place, but we do know that she and her husband moved here after previously living in the Battersea region because Hackford wanted to be closer to the East London art scene. As for which of these properties Helen spends the vast majority of her time at, well, now that her Hollywood Hills home is up for sale, my guess is she'll be visiting Lake Tahoe more than ever since she claims it's her favorite spot of all. But being the bi-continental couple that she and Taylor are, I am sure they will spend almost as much time at home in London as well. Until Helen Marin throws open the front doors to her property that's going to bring today's house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. If you came face to face with a bear climbing up your back steps, would you run into the house or try and scare it off? I mean, I actually do have a bear story, but that's for another day. Let me know if you think you're as brave as Helen apparently is in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. I'm Care the Vampire Slayer, and if you'd like to keep exploring the homes of other big time celebrities, celebrities, then don't go anywhere. Coming up, I'm taking you inside of Jane Fonda's real estate portfolio. I'll see you all next time. Bye. 
In 2017, after splitting from her longtime partner, actress Jane Fonda got herself a bachelorette pad in Los Angeles. The former couple sold their eco-conscious Beverly Hills mansion and Jane picked herself up a massive Mediterranean style townhouse for over $5 million, which is where she still currently lives. From mega mansions to a New Mexico ranch, Ms. Fonda's property collection is quite impressive and today we're going to take a look. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. In 2017, after splitting from her longtime partner Richard Perry and offloading their Beverly Hills estate, Jane picked herself up her current home which serves as the ultimate breezy bachelorette pod. Located in Century City, a neighborhood on the west side of Los Angeles, Jane's current three-level home could be considered humble for a Hollywood star like herself. The crib may be labeled as a townhome, but spanning 6,679 square feet of space, it's more like a mansion. The actress's home is tucked away in a guard-gated community, and residents of the Century Woods complex have access to a variety of amenities, such as a community clubhouse, tennis courts, and indoor and outdoor swimming pools. Jane paid $5.45 million in cash for the 2015-built property, and inside there are four beds and seven baths throughout. The exterior of the tall home is charming with stucco walls and terracotta roofs, along with a fountain out front. Despite the large size of the place, it's easily accessible thanks to the elevator which services all the floors. The airy and private courtyard out front leads into the entry hall and stairway, where you'll also find the study as well as some of the common living spaces. The formal living room features a fireplace as well as a wood paneled ceiling and grey and white color scheme, and nearby there's a 12 person dining dining room. Jane's spacious kitchen and family room are open concept style, and the kitchen is arranged around a large center island with snack bar, while there's also an extra serving corner to entertain guests. The attached family room boasts plush couches and opens up to a shaded courtyard. Out on the cozy courtyard, you'll find cream-colored tiles that blend in well, along with plenty of space to lounge. Jane's grand master suite is roomy with both a fireplace and vaulted ceilings as well as two walk-in closets and a large private balcony. Her ensuite bath is spa style with a glass shower and soaking tub. The house boasts a staff or guest room with bath on the main floor with two more on the second level, all with their own balconies. Finally, there's an office media room on the third level that opens to a beautiful rooftop terrace, perfect for checking out the views and taking in that California weather. Altogether, Jane's mansion-sized townhome provides a light and airy atmosphere with comforting, neutral colors and light woods throughout. Just before Jane bought her current Century City home, she put her contemporary Beverly Hills estate up on the market. Following her split from Richard Perry, with whom she shared the mansion, the former couple decided that they would let go of the property they lived in since 2012. Considering Jane and Richard spent $7.3 million on the home and finally sold it for about $8.5 5 million in 2018, they at least turned a slight profit. The eco-conscious crib was located in the trendy and expensive Truesdale Estates. This neighborhood of Beverly Hills is a fancy community stuffed with fellow celebrities. Built in a modern style, Jane's former residence spanned 7,102 square feet of space with 4 beds and 6.5 baths throughout. In a video, Jane once said that she instantly knew the Beverly Hills abode was for her the second she drew drove through the gates and saw the sharp architectural design and shiny stainless steel garage doors. According to the actress, the home simply had taste. Another feature Jane loved inside this home was the kitchen, which opened through walls of glass to a terrace boasting amazing views. From there you could see the canyon and the mountains, and the views reminded Jane of the Southern California setting she grew up in back in the late 30s and 40s. While the home was built in 1961, it had been majorly remodeled and stocked with updates since then, and the exteriors were decked out in wood siding with stone accents. It was set behind private gates on a lot spanning nearly an acre of land, and there were eco-friendly add-ons such as bamboo floors, bioethanol fireplaces, UV thermal glass windows, and more. 
The stainless steel front door opened up into the entry gallery, which had a dramatic all glass elevator. I think that elevators seem to be a trend in Jane's properties. The home offered plenty of connected common spaces on the upper level, including a step down living room with floor to ceiling stone fireplace and wall of windows. Jane's home also offered a dining room and a kitchen with walnut cabinets, fancy appliances, and much more. This space opened to a small and cozy den. Jane's one-time office was just off of this room and it boasted built-in bookshelves and windows looking out to the peaceful wood. One of the guest bedrooms, if not more, had its own terrace, while the bright master bedroom had a two-level sitting room, spacious sleeping quarters, double bathrooms, and a walk-in dressing room and closet. The lower level of the crib offered hardwood flooring and a media lounge that looked like a music studio, also with a bar and a home gym. This space opened to the private backyard, where there was a covered outdoor lounge with plush furnishings, along with open terraces and a meditation garden with fountain. The solar heated swimming pool overlooked amazing scenery and there was a nearby viewing platform with a fire pit to catch the best sunsets. Let's not forget that Jane also once owned a stunning ranch in New Mexico. Called the Forked Lightning Ranch, this was where the actress once went to escape the Hollywood bustle. She purchased the 1925 built ranch back in 2000 and renovated the property immensely, even building a main Spanish colonial style main house dubbed the River House, which spanned over 9,500 square feet of space. She listed her beautiful ranch in 2015 for $19.5 million and sold it in an off-market deal for an unknown amount. This unique property was full of character and sought on 2,300 acres of land just east of Santa Fe, right on the Picos River. It's actually next to Picos National Historical Park and the property is the middle section of what used to be a 13,000 acre cattle ranch. When Jane got her hands on the sprawling property, the only house was a two bedroom log cabin where she lived for three years while constructing her custom family mansion. Jane said about her former ranch, the moment I stepped on the property, I knew it was home. It's sheer beauty made my hair stand on end. In the living room, Jane designed the space with a carved wood chandelier that resembled elk antlers, as well as a fireplace and a set of French doors. The dining room had towering wood beam ceilings like much of the common spaces and another carved and rustic chandelier. The actress wanted to recreate the look of traditional new Mexico ranch homes, and it appears that she was successful, adding many of the classic features like adobe walls, a tin roof, antique doors, and more. The home boasted a handcrafted appearance and feel that also blended with modern features. Elsewhere in the house, there was an upstairs galleria with more antiques on display, and Jane's master suite with a headboard she designed herself, a sitting area with fireplace, more wood beam ceilings, and a vintage dressing room. So now we've taken a look at legendary actress Jane Fonda and three of her properties past and present. While each of the estates were completely different, we can tell she is quite the eye for real estate and design. Even downsizing to what's dubbed a townhome is still a stylish mansion-sized abode in the heart of LA. Out of the three properties, which did you like best? Personally, I'm a fan of that New Mexico ranch. The design was so thoughtful and unique, and it also seemed to be the most warm and welcoming out of the three, but that's just me. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on her homes down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a follow on Instagram and tell me which celebrity homes we should look at next. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.